Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another Sunday Stata tip. Today I want to talk about local macros and Stata. Specifically, I want to use this video to get you used to local macros and Stata so that when we start talking about loops, you already know how locals work and it's going to make learning how to write loops and Stata a lot easier. Because we're going to be talking about local macros not in the context of loops, I want to talk about some other uses that you can do for locals that don't involve loops. There are four main ways that I think will be most helpful for your day-to-day -day state of coding, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, just like before, we're going to use this auto data because it's sort of easy, and let's go ahead and start with our first way to use local macros in Stata, and that way is going to be with retrieving information that Stata stored from an estimation result. What in the world does that mean? That means you run a command in Stata, you see some output. In the background, Stata has saved some of that information, and you can use that information, you can call that, to do different things. So for example, if I do this sum with detail, and we've used this before to do some other things, but here it is again. And so again, we did this detail, and you can see all of these numbers that Stata puts out. But if you want to use one of these numbers to, say, make a threshold, make a cutoff, determine a z-score, any of those things, what's happening in the background, if I say return list, as you can see all the things that Stata has stored. So Stata stored stuff like the N, the weighted sum, the mean, and all of these different percentiles that you see here. And we can call those in our code. But in order to call them, these are basically locals in Stata. And so we need to call the correct local. So if I want to call a local, first of all, you can see it's right here where I say R mean. And this is going to be the same mean as we saw in our table. The way I type that, just to type it again, is it's display. The first start of the local name is going to be the backtick, which is generally the key above your tab command on the left. So backtick. And then notice that the name is R parentheses mean. So I'm going to type that. And notice that in general, it's going to be the single quote. If you've got state of 17 or later, it's going to fill in the second quote for you as soon as you click the backtick. If you have an older version of Stata, it might not. And the way you can tell you've entered the local correctly is because this will change color. So this is what we mean by calling the information that state is stored. So as an application, maybe I want to turn miles per gallon into a standardized variable to a z-score variable, the mean of zero and standard deviation of one. So here it is where I'm just taking miles per gallon for each observation, subtracting the mean from that sum command, dividing it by the standard deviation. And if I do both of those things where I sum it after I make it, you can see that I've created a MPG underscore standard where it's a mean zero or very, very close to zero and standard deviation of one. Now again, this is gonna be really useful in loops because you can imagine I might want to standardize more than one variable. And in a previous video, we did in fact do a loop where we generated standardized variables for multiple variables and we're using this local to help us. So that is example one. Example two, I could have a regression and with this regression, maybe it's price on miles per gallon. If I say return list, I'm not going to get anything useful because it's just going to tell me that the regression was a nine by two matrix. But what I can do is I can say E return list and E return list in this case is going to give me more helpful information. So how do I know whether or not it's going to be a return list or an E return list? Well, generally in Stata, if I do some sort of estimation like a regression, it's going to be an E return for estimation. And if I do something like a sum, it's going to be just a regular old return list. So what I can do with this E return list is I can do something like display the coefficient of miles per gallon, which is slash B of miles per gallon. So it'll look like that, which is exactly the 238 from our regression table. The other thing that I can do is there's an E sample command. An E sample just says it's a one if that observation was included in the sample and zero if not. So I could just sum if E sample, and as you can see, all the observation were used in my regression. This is also useful because I could do a separate regression where maybe I'm doing price on like height or weight, and then I could say regress, well, let's just write it. I could say something like regress price on weight if E sample, which would tell me to only do the regression on the observations that were in the original sample from this regression. I could use eSample to generate a variable or a dummy variable that was one if you were in the eSample and zero if not to use for the rest of my code. So this can be really helpful. 
And as you get more advanced, you also will probably be using these coefficients as well. So that's just one example. That's one use of local macros, which is to retrieve or store estimation results from different commands. The second way that I think local macros can be helpful outside of loops is just to make some list of values if you've got a bunch of values that you don't necessarily want to type out before you do a loop. So this is more closely related to actual loops. But what you can do, for instance, is I have a lot of different makes, a lot of different brands in this auto data. Maybe I want to get ready to loop through them. I can use this levels of command to make a new local variable called brands. And that brands is just going to be the list of different makes. And what you can see is when I do that and I call brands, or I just display it. It's the list of all the makes that I have in my data. It doesn't make a lot of sense just because the auto data is kind of wonky, but that's how you could do that. The other thing that's useful to talk about about locals is that locals don't exist outside of the do file running. So for example, if I were to call brands right now, if I say display brands, you can see that Stata all of a sudden has forgotten what this brands list is. And that's because for locals, locals only exist, Stata only knows what you're talking about as you're running the do file. So as soon as the do file stops, Stata is gonna forget anything that was a local that you made in your do file. And so this is why it's really useful to have everything you're doing in a do file, especially as you get more advanced in your coding. Because as you can see, if I were to run this do file line by line and like basically copy and paste it into my command window, it would not recognize brands when I tried to call it unless it's all running together. So I really need all of this to happen in the do file. And I really need to make sure my do file is such that I can just hit run. My entire do file will run top to bottom without stopping. So just as another example, I could do the same thing with foreign and I get zero and one. This DS command is super useful. This is just the list of variables that do not have type string. So I can return list after I do this, and that's the variables that do not have a type string. So they could be numbers, they could be integers, they could be binary, any of those things as long as they're not strings. So the second way that locals are really useful, again, is just to make a list of values or a list of variables so that when you go to loop, you already have that list in place. State has basically made that list for you. The third way that I think locals are super helpful, again, is really related to loops. Basically, you can make counters or use different endings. So for example, I have this local I, I'm gonna set to zero. And then again, we'll talk about loops more in depth, but I could just basically loop it five times and have Stata add one to the I value each time. And you can see it's just gonna go ahead and do that. This is really useful because if I say split this make variable into three different variables called brand, and I want to sum each of those brand variables. Well, I don't want to say sum brand one and sum brand two and sum brand three. All I want to do is go from one to three and sum brand sub X. Again, this is the local with the back tick and the single quote. And if I do that, you can see what's going to happen is I'm going to sum each of these brand variables. Remember that these are string variables, so I'm not going to get anything in this information in terms of mean, max, or min. This is just to show you that the code actually worked in Stata and that this is a valid way to write a loop. Again, a little preview, but a really useful instance where you can use local macros. Now, the fourth way that you can use local macros is sort of to write notes for your tables and graphs ahead of time. I think this is really useful because it sort of cleans up your final command for your graph or your table. So for example, here's a note that I wanna to add to a bin scatter plot. And I just want to say this really long thing about how this note can be spelled out. And I can do this without clogging up a two-way command. So when I do my bin scatter plot or price of miles per gallon, if I didn't do that, I would have to type out the note right here. And that's going to make this command really long. But also if I want to go back and edit the note, it's going to be sort of clunky to find exactly where I want to change, make sure I change it correctly. If I've got multiple notes, this could stack up really fast. So instead, what I could do is I could just make this local note one. I can put the text that I want in note one. I could have note two, note three, note four. Again, where each of those are separate notes. And then I can just call them with quotation marks around them. And it will go ahead and put that into the graph for me. So if I put this all together, you can see I didn't put a title or anything, but the note just went straight in without me having to do anything. If I wanted to change this, I could say, add it is easy to change. And if I put that in and rerun it, 
you can see that the note is going to change appropriately. It's not fitting on the graph, but we're not worrying about that right now. And you can see, again, this is super useful if you're making a lot of tables and graphs. So again, hopefully this gives you four ways to use macros. Hopefully it tells you a little bit more about how local macros work in Stata. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. If something's unclear, comment below. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.